Greg Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke, also in studio with us, making a sound and look as well as possible. Emma Armstrong, Hayden, and Jack. We're now joined by U.S. Olympian Waco High and Baylor's Will London the Third. When I say that, Will, when you've heard that, when you found that out, when you knew that was official, U.S. Olympic team. What did that mean to you? What was your reaction? Um, it was some mixed emotions on it, you know. Like I, I wanted, you know, me, you've covered me a long time, and me, I've always wanted to win. It was never about just doing the bare minimum. So I was still a little disappointed, but, you know, I had to hold my emotions together and realize I accomplished a big dream, and not anybody in Waco can really say that. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity. I'm ready, but I'm still hungry. What was it, I mean, when you get, you're get you preparing and you know you're about there, what's that moment like when you know, as long as I know you, you weren't happy with, you know, your finish, you said you wanted to be better, but when you knew, like, this is the one when I get there, like that right before it? Um, I, I, really, I really don't know how to explain it because it's just like I've been doing it for so long that it just kind of goes through the motion. But I can say that I'm excited to know that I wasn't excited about the situation because it's like when you, as an athlete, if you get excited about being too complacent, you know, you really don't see too much more of yourself as an athlete or a person. And the fact that I was able to just make the relay pool and I was, you know what I'm saying? It was just like it's my first time being able to make the Olympics and I'm excited for it, but I know I could do more. That right there added fuel to the fire because that just told me as an athlete told myself that you're going in the right direction you're going to remember this feeling in the next three years instead of four you're going to remember for world championship and you're going to want to do more and not have this feeling again and one thing about you know me and you both know you poke the bear too long it's going to bite eventually so it's like I know my time is coming you know so I'm going to reset for next year after the Tokyo Games and, you know, get ready. And this time I'm going to come with vengeance, vengeance and ready to get on the goal, uh, the goal for the 400 and not just the relay. So, Will, I know you saw uh, my tweet last night because uh, you responded to it and, and you just kind of mentioned it at the beginning there. Uh, you are the first Waco athlete to make the Olympics. There's been lots of Baylor Bears on, you know, Olympic teams. Michael Johnson, obviously, is probably the first one people think of, Jeremy Warner, et cetera. But the first person from Waco, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, I'm able to to say that and, and really show the kids that's from Waco and everybody around that it can be done. You know, I don't think – the kids here, they've already been able to see NFL players, NBA players, you know. And But I think to see the biggest stage, it's, it's going to be different, you know. It's easy to watch a, a NFL game every week and a child can get complacent with it or watch an NBA game because it's like the norm. But for them to see something that they're going to only see for every four years, it's, it, I think Olympic game is going to stick a lot more, you know. So I'm just glad I'm here to inspire and to show the kids that and everybody around that their dreams can be done and just got to keep fighting and keep pushing. And whatever comes along with it, you just got to run through it. How long was yesterday after you had, of course, clinched a, a berth on the team and then you have to go through all sorts of, I would think, protocol, paperwork, whatever. Now you're going to Tokyo down the road. But you told me on a text message it had been a long, long day. Was it because of relief and, and the fact that it was over or because of all the things you have to go through uh, through the Olympic, uh, I guess, team and, and qualifications, et cetera? Yeah, it was just a lot of processing, like team processing and all of those things like that. It was just a very, very long day. Like, I know when I got um, woke up that morning and I didn't sleep at all the night before. And it really wasn't even sleep from excitement, but sleep from what could I have done more? What could I, what can I fix? And what can we do going into the season for next year? I was already thinking ahead mm. of what we can do to, you know, be be the greatest next year. And I'm, I'm always that type of athlete. Is like, I can win right now a gold medal at the Olympics, 
but what are we going to do next year to make sure we're on this same level? Like, we got to do more. And, you know, and I think that's why me and Coach Hart have always been able to do great things together because he's a win. He's a coach that loves to win. I'm an athlete that loves to win. And we, we're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to try to fix everything we can so we don't have this feeling again next year. But as far as yesterday, I mean, the team processing, I've done team processing on to make U.S. teams before, but this one was a lot. Like, I think it took over three hours to do all the processing, um, book the flights, um, try on the uniforms, get everything done, um, media team, just all of those things like that. And it, it's a lot more this year because the COVID situation. Mm-hmm. And we even have to give our own COVID test, the ones you got to stick all the way up your nose mm-hmm. before we leave. You got to do like two of them before we leave just to get to Tokyo and just covering all the, the basics, everything that's going to be going on when we get down there before we get there. And we were there for like three hours. It was a long day. I think I walked in there at 12 and I think I didn't even leave to like three, three or four. How old were you when you first thought you wanted to go to the Olympics and how old were you when you, when you realized it was a reality? Uh, I think, I realized I wanted to go to the Olympics in the fifth grade, and I think I realized it was able to happen in 2016, my freshman year at Baylor, when I actually did go to the Olympic trials, and I made it to the semifinals, and I got knocked out. Like, I missed it by two places um, my freshman year. I think I was only, like, 18. And I think at that point, it was, like, still wasn't comprehended how great that was because I've seen athletes that been young and made the team. So I didn't even want to put myself in a position to say I'm young, you know, like I've, I've always been the type to be hungry and know I can do something. And I've never set myself low on the standard. So I know now going into it, I kind of did sell myself short because I was just wanting not to relive that moment of not making a team. And not and miss and not missing the semi. I mean, not missing the final and making it past the semi final this year. And I think once I did that, the, I kind of felt flat going into the final because the goal was accomplished, and I felt sold myself short. And you know, it's a it's a mistake that every athlete sometimes can make. Everybody sells themselves short sometimes, but you know, one thing about it, it's not the end of the world. I'm young. I'm 23 years old. I'm still able to go through countless number of Olympic cycles and redo this. And I got world championships next year. I get to reset and figure it all out and start again. Will, I asked Coach Hart about this yesterday, but what do you remember about first meeting him and what kind of an impact has he had on your life? Uh, I met Coach Hart, I think my first time meeting Coach Hart when I actually ran for Team Waco. And he was just coaching Sonya and Jeremy at the time, I believe. And I wasn't even thinking about college or anything. I think I was in middle school, maybe even younger. And my dad always tell me about who he was, how great he was. But as I got older and got into the system of, you know, trying to get recruited and things, and I think the first time he came, he came to my house and he said, you know, whatever goal that you want to reach, we're going to reach it. And we've been on the same page ever since then. It's always been we're attacking every goal. And I feel like this time the goal, we, we accomplished it, but I know me and him know we could do more. And I feel like this is something that's going to always be in the back of my head and in his, right, because I know Coach Hart. Like I, I, I know how Coach Hart thinks as a coach. He's a great coach, and he wants to win just as much as I do. So we're going to figure this out. We're going to get it together. And, you know, it's, it's just a little bump in the road. It's not much. And it's crazy to say that making an Olympic team is a bump in the road just for a relay, you know, because it's still a great accomplishment. But we want to make the podium for the Open for it. All right. So the first ever track meet or the first time you ever ran competitively, I think your father told me you were five years old. Do you remember what shoes you ran in? Uh, swim shoes, I believe so. Swim shoes. That was on yeah. a mini cushion. Or yeah, they didn't have uh, – they didn't make spikes. The, my feet were too small for the spikes. Oh. The size of the baby. And 
And that's how it started. And here we are, here you are, not we, here you are, all these years later, and you're representing the United States. Of course, this is something you expected, as you mentioned. Your mom and dad, I asked your father how many miles, had, because they just got back from Eugene, I guess, yesterday. You were in late, late overnight. I said, how many miles have you traveled? And they're not going to be able to go to Japan or Tokyo because of the COVID you know, restrictions. And he said millions. And I, maybe he's right. How much has their support meant to you and all of what they've done to help you get to where you are today? Ah, uh, man, I, I can honestly and truthfully say I would not be here in the position I were I am today without them. You know, like they've always been there every step of the way. My mom and my dad, you know, they've always been there from practices to track meets to basketball to football, whatever it was, they were there from every day at practice. My parents were there. Um, not practice, they was at the meets, at the basketball games, football games, um, early morning drives. You know, we was just doing local or going from Dallas to Houston. I remember one time I was playing in an AAU basketball tournament and running the state track meet in the same weekend. And I think the state track meet was in San Antonio. And we drove from San Antonio on a Saturday, on a Friday, and then drove straight from San Antonio right after I got done running and and uh, drove straight to Dallas to Arlington for a basketball tournament in the same day. So, And this was something that went on consecutive weeks for years till I got into high school and was going through the same situation in high school. So this wasn't anything that was like a one-year thing. This was 10-plus years, and I really appreciate them, you know, and it's pretty cool to be able to see them continue the journey to me being a professional athlete now and I want to be able to be in a situation next year where I'm able to go on the stands and hug them and say we did it even though we did do it but on the on the more of the caliber that we want to succeed in was there a time one time when you were running in a race your dad saw you on the track I think he said he may have gotten there late and he yelled at you something about uh Will, Will, he's trying to give you some some sort of advice, and you turn to him. I don't know this is while you were running. You were younger. Dad, I'm going to win this. I'm fine, or something like that. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, it was actually before my first ever goal at, uh, at, the, at the state meet for TAF. And um, I think I was – I would think I was 12 and under. I think it was 12. I think I was like 11 or 12 years old. And we were sitting under the tent, and he had just got to the meet. It was at the state track meet. And I was just sitting there, and that's when I finally realized that I could be a great athlete. And and this is at 12 years old, and I was focusing, and I was just really tuned and locked in. And I couldn't hear nothing from the outside world. It was just me, and I was locked in. I was ready to run. He was just yelling my name, Will, 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 Will. He was just yelling, trying to get my attention. And I could just hear him, and I turned, and I was like, "Like, stop, I can do this. And I know he was upset because he thought I just wasn't trying to listen to him. And I ran, I ended up winning. And I think that day I won three gold medals that day. And we broke the um, the state record as well. It was on that relay, it was me uh, and Khalil Hardy. Hmm. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Good yeah. old Khalil, yeah. Yeah, Khalil Midway and went to Oklahoma. And then yeah, you also yeah. one time ran with uh, Calvin Hill, right? Tom Hill's son that played at Live Oak, who's yeah. a really good athlete as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I ran with him as well. So I think on that one, it was me, Khalil Hawkins, Jamal Cashaw, and uh, Jalen. Uh, keep forgetting Jalen's name, but he also played football at, um, at Midway. And I think he went to Abilene Christian Okay, play football. So it was Jalen Moss? Great. Yeah, yeah, Jalen Moss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good player. Good player. Yeah, absolutely. And, Not a surprise you guys won with all the names you just mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> also, Bunch of D1 don't forget, guys. Uh, don't forget Christian. Christian ran as well. Uh, he went to. Uh, he ended up going to SMU for football from Midway. He was a DB. Yeah, remember Christian? Remember him very, very well. Yeah, a couple yeah. of Midway DBs there. Yeah, they they need some more of those guys to come back. They need they need more yeah. of those back. Will, uh, I know you expected this. Now you get to go compete in Tokyo for your country. What will that feel like? Have you even thought about the opportunity if they start singing 
the Star Spangled Banner, and a, a medal goes around your neck? I haven't even processed in my head yet because, like I, like I told you, I feel like we're, I'm still hungry for for the next for the next level. You mm-hmm. know, so it's just, I, I haven't even processed it yet, and I know I need to because this is not a moment that you might not ever get. You know, a lot can happen in the next three to four years. Sure. A lot can happen from here on till tonight, ten o'clock tonight. So it's just like I need to enjoy the moment. But like I told you, like the athlete I am, I'm just a very competitive and very hungry athlete. And this time I sold myself short, but I will take the opportunity and I will enjoy it. And I'm going to go to Tokyo. I can't wait to get down there, run for uh, USA, like I've done in the past, but on a bigger stage this time. Like you say, you never know. I mean, the Olympics were supposed to happen last year, and yeah. they didn't end up happening. And then there was talk about them not happening this time around, and thankfully – uh, they are, but I would imagine just walking in as a member of Team USA, the opening ceremonies is going to be pretty, pretty cool experience. Will, you're not the only uh, Baylor uh, track and field star that's headed over to the games, or even Baylor alum, uh, Brittany Griner will be over there, obviously, with the basketball team, but Casey Lightfoot and Trayvon Bromel also making Team USA. Uh, what are your thoughts on four Bears, but three track and field uh, Baylor uh, alums making their way over to Tokyo? Uh, man, it's great. You know, I did uh, yesterday, you know, me and Trey, we've been together really this whole week in Oregon. Like the day I got there, we was together and uh, we spent a lot of time down there. And uh, and then along to yesterday, we was doing team processes together the whole day as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was it was pretty cool. And then uh, I got to see KC, I think, two days before we started competing. And uh, we talked a little bit at the track, and I knew I already knew those guys. We was all sitting so to make the team because those guys always set a high standard for themselves, and we they hold each other accountable, and they're always ready to be great. And I'm just happy, really happy for Trayvon to be back into his 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 feeling to being a championship runner. He's never really lost it. He just had to get back in that mode and get ready to go. Like me and Trey talk every day. Even though you know, what I'm saying he moved to a different training group, but he, me and him talk every day, and he never lost it. Like I told him that from day one, that his injury and everything, and you know, what I'm saying I used to tell him, I'm like Trey, you, you still gonna be the same Trey Von Vermeil, you still gonna be the fastest guy that I know, and you just gotta go out there and run, and everything that he's done, I'm not surprised by. Like I kid you not, I've seen this guy do some great things. I've seen him go out there and be able to run fast at a very low caliber of, of him being injured. So I knew once he got back 100% healthy, it was his to get. Will everybody that has uh, known you, not just the city of Waco or Waco High alums, but Baylor alum, everybody, people in Central Texas, United States, thrilled for you. Thank you so much. I know it's been a busy few days and a long time coming. And uh, good luck. Enjoy, as you said, the moment. Enjoy the next few weeks and also enjoy that trip to Tokyo and bring back that medal for you, the family, for everyone involved, and Baylor, and, and thanks for your time. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you, guys. Will London's father said he missed maybe one a meet as he, when, he, when Will was growing up. He and his wife went everywhere. He broke a foot and could not get to a meet because he just, you know, he had foot sur- major foot surgery. But uh, then he started, to, I think he said maybe that Will – was a junior or so, but that's, that's a family that's, that has traveled well, hundreds of thousands of miles. Like that's world class parenting, right there. Yeah, when yeah. then the only thing that keeps you away from watching your kid is like the doctor saying you can't, <laughs> you go. can't go. Yeah. Well, I think you know the fact that he loves it, you mm-hmm. know, is the important part in in that whole yep. you know traveling around thing because we definitely know of parents or know of people or maybe even experience it ourselves where. You know, the kid's not necessarily all that into it, but you're taking them all around, you know, because they got to get that college scholarship or whatever. But Will's into it, and the family's into it, and, and they're going to the Olympics, and I think that's awesome. It is awesome. And thanks to Will London the third, also to his parents for some of the insight we received as well. And uh, congratulations to both uh, Will London third, and also Trayvon Brunel, K- uh, Bromel, and, Casey Lightfoot, and, and also Brittany Grimes. And I do wonder if the city of Waco will – I mean, they don't need to have a parade or anything crazy, but, I mean, the first Olympian in your town's history is kind of a big deal. Yeah, like, that has to be at least something where, 
once he gets back, yeah. you would think because then then if you do it now, then he gets so something at some point's going to happen. Yeah, at yeah. least like Olympic Day or something like that. Jordan.